Surely many of you have heard the old adage, be careful what you ask for. Before Christmas, during the winter season, we were all singing, let it snow. Boy, did we get walloped with snow. And now it's creating a fine mess as it's melting away. But that's OK, except that it looks ugly right now. At any rate, be careful what you ask for. Except that in the first reading, the people asked for a king knowing that they were being disobedient, knowing that they were not honoring their God, because God was the only king that was ever intended for them. I will be your God, I, and you will be my people. It was the covenant God had made with the Israelites, and yet they turned away from him because of what they saw in their other their neighbors and other leaders, they wanted a king here on earth to guide them and to protect them. And so Samuel, who spoke to them, finally went to the Lord and prayed. And God said, they're not rejecting you, they're rejecting me. And how often do we reject God? Because we think we know better what we need, when oftentimes it's what we want. Israel wanted a king and although they were warned what kind of king they would get, they continued. They persisted in asking for what was not meant to be. And so, as we'll find out tomorrow, they got Saul, who was not a good king. It is in our faith to allow God to do what God intends for us in our lives. And oftentimes, it's not what we might have asked for. It's not what we might have wanted. But it's what God knows that we need. In the gospel story, we hear Jesus going home. However, did Capernaum, Capernaum become his home? And yet, if you were to go to Israel today, you would see as you walk into the museum city of Capernaum, as it's written, the town of Jesus. When I was there, our guide said, it should say the town of the Dr. Jesus, because it was there that, as we see, he cured so many. He did so much good for so many people. And as you walk into this museum, an outdoor museum, because it's an old city, and you can see where the temple was where Jesus would have spoken, covered over by other stones for the second temple. And to the other side, you see a huge church, it almost looks like a flying saucer, it's not. It's the Franciscan church built over the site of Peter's mother-in-law's home, which is where Jesus made a home for himself. And as you look at that building, there are all kinds of rooms built around a center room. And it's said that all of those rooms were added on. It almost became like a hospital because so many people went to see Jesus for a cure, for healing, for something they thought they needed or wanted. What they got was much more. In today's story, we hear these four men, without saying a word, are asking for their friend because they bring their friend to the place where Jesus isn't unable to go in. They persisted because of their faith. And they opened up the ceiling, the roof, and lowered the man in. And without even being present, Jesus looked upon the man with mercy, with kindness, and with love. And he said, your sins are forgiven. Because to the Israelite, Israelite mind, it was often because of sin that people would be ill and would be sick or may have been blind, as you know the story of the, man born, the young man born blind. Whose fault was it? It was no one's fault. Things just happen because of our own will sometimes and because of evil. And so Jesus said, your sins are forgiven. And when the scribes complained, Jesus said, so that you know that the Son of Man, God himself, has power over sin. He told the man, get up and walk. The man didn't ask for healing. He didn't ask for forgiveness. But Jesus knew what he needed. And he knew that this man would be a sign to others of what is important in our life, which is faith. Faith is the thing that we should ask for and allow God to do 
what God wills for us and our needs and our wants so that our faith might increase and so that we, like the four men, might bring others to Jesus to uplift and uphold and increase their faith as well.